put your hand on your chest and say, I'm dead to the power of sin. And I'm sure of new life because Jesus rose from the dead. And I came to tell you today, you can be sure, you can be certain. It is guaranteed. If Jesus rose from the dead, then your past is past. You have new life through the resurrection power of Christ. Your sins are forgiven. The bondage is broken. You can be sure of this today. And when you find Jesus, you won't find him in the place of death. When you look for Jesus, he's not in the tomb. He's not in the darkness. He's not in despair. He's not in defeat. If you're looking for Jesus today, you will find him in the place of power, in the place of resurrection. For Jesus is not in the place of death. He's in the place of resurrection power. Somebody say Jesus. How do you tell a mother that her son is dead and he's not coming back? How do you tell a mother that All the medical technology in the world can't bring her son back to life. That was the dilemma facing Dr. Kent Sutter of St. Joseph's Hospital in Missouri, USA on January 19th, 2015. The ambulance had brought in the dead body of 14-year-old John Smith into the hospital. Dr. Sutter did everything he could to revive the young boy. They worked on Sim, they did CPR, but his body had been lifeless already for nearly 30 minutes. There was no pulse, no breath, no movement. And in spite of all the efforts, after 27 more minutes of CPR, the doctors realized there was no sign of life. John Smith was dead. He had been dead for 45 minutes, and Dr. Kent Sutter now prepared to tell John's mother that he wasn't coming back. So he called for the mother to come to the room. But when Joy Smith, John's mother, entered the room, she did not know her son was dead. She didn't know he had not breathed or had a pulse for 45 minutes. The doctor hadn't yet told her. She only knew that her son needed a miracle. So she walked into the room and laid her hands upon her son, John, and started praying, oh God, give my son a miracle. Oh God, heal him. Oh God, deliver him. And as the mother prayed, suddenly the power of God came into the room and touched the body of John Smith and he started breathing. Quickly, the medical professionals came and worked on him and gave him oxygen. His pulse came back. He started to move after 45 minutes being dead. John Smith was brought back to life by the power of God. (laughs) Dr. Sutterer later said these words, I had exhausted all interventions in my scientific armamentarium without even a hint of success. I was preparing myself to give a mother the final bad news that her son was gone from this world. She called on God. God brought him back. I was privileged to witness a miracle. It's been nine years since John Smith was raised from the dead by the power of Jesus Christ. He's now a motivational speaker. He travels and tells large crowds of his testimony of how Jesus resurrected him. And he tells them that God can move in miracle power to save anyone at any time. For you see, what happened to John Smith can happen to each and every one of us this morning. You may never die physically like that and be in the hospital 45 minutes without breath and come back to life. But all of us have been under the bondage of death, of sin, of despair, of darkness of the devil. And Jesus Christ's power has broken through. He can save you in every area of your life. He's come to save you in your past. He's come to save you in your present. And he's come to save you in your future. There is no other Savior, just Jesus. And today we will find out how his salvation comes to deliver us and set us on the right course. (laughs) 
Almighty and everlasting Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That is the name above every other name, the name at which every knee must bow and every tongue must confess, the name of the risen Savior and the resurrected King. We submit to you now. We bind every demon spirit of hell. I command every evil force of darkness that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. Be silent. Be gone in the name of Jesus. And I loose the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to enlighten our hearts and minds and give us resurrection power in every area of our life. We give you the praise that you are glorified and our lives are transformed today by faith in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. I want to invite everyone to join your faith with mine right now. Put your hand on your chest and pray out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome once again to Agape House. So lift your hand and say after me, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is risen indeed. And because he lives, we can live also. You see, Christ's victory is our victory as well. When he defeated death, he freed us from the power of death. He's the resurrection and the life. And because he lives, we will live in eternity with him. That's why Easter is just much more than a religious tradition. It's more than a historical event. It's not just about what happened 2,000 years ago. It's what God is doing in your life now, in my life now, in all the world today. He's still on the move. He's still breaking bondages. He's still setting us free. For when Jesus rose from the dead, he opened the way for all of us to have new life. The stone is still rolled away, making a way out of escape and salvation for every one of us. See, the resurrection is not was just not for Jesus to come back from the dead. It's so that we can also come back from the dead. He came to get life for himself and to give life to every one of us. That's the powerful truth we're going to discover today in our sermon titled, No Other Savior, Just Jesus. We're going to see how Jesus' resurrection power impacts not just history, but you and me today. Now, to help us learn the truth for today, Today, we printed the world famous Agape House sermon notes. Hello, they're inside your bulletin. They look like this. Go ahead and take them out now and follow along with me as we discover three ways Jesus saves you. Our scripture text for today is on your notes, it's on the screen. It's my favorite account of the resurrection story found in the Gospel of St. Mark. Chapter 16, verses 2 to 7. I'm going to begin the reading. Then when we get to the really good part, I'm going to ask you guys to join in with me and we'll read it out loud together. Now receive the word of the Lord. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, the women went to the tomb and all the ladies said amen. amen. On the way, they were asking each other, eh, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. Hey! No bismontino. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. Hey! And I did. But the angel said, let's read it all together. Ready, go. Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to your heart today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. I love this story of Easter. It's so simple but profound. It's straightforward. It tells us the essential details we need to know today of how Jesus comes to save us. And in the seven short sentences of the angel, we find redemption for every area of our life. So let's discover three ways Jesus saves us. And here's your first truth. Jesus saves you from your past. Everybody say the past is past. Listen again to what the angel said in verse 6. Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. Everybody say was. 
He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. So the first thing we need to understand, the word was, is the past tense. Jesus was crucified, but now he's not here. He's risen from the dead. And that speaks to us of God's ability to save you from your past. You see, the worst thing that could happen to anybody is to die. But even worse than that is to be crucified and then die. But no matter what happened to Jesus, the worst thing in history to be crucified and then die, he overcame that misery. He overcame that suffering. He overcame the power of death, and he is no longer in the past, he's risen. And the same power of Jesus to deliver you from your past is here today. No matter what has happened to you, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've become, you don't need to fear, you don't need to be alarmed, because Jesus is not in the past, he's in the present, moving you forward in the future, and he has power over your past. If you believe it, say amen. See, friends, the fact is you cannot have a bright future till you've dealt with your past. The reason why some of us are not making progress in life is because you've never dealt with your past. If you lived in poverty and hunger all your life, it can affect the way you live today. You may have money, but you're afraid to spend any money because you remember the days of lack. Or if you were abused as a child, maybe your uncle raped you. God have mercy on you. And you feel shy. You feel timid and fearful. You're always nervous about what will happen. What happened in the past is affecting your present. Maybe you were beaten by your dad and now you're beating your son. You're addicted uh, with uh, alcohol and drugs because your past is holding you in bondage. You've got to deal with your past to move into a future of freedom. Turn your notes over to page two and understand that everybody has something in your past. I'm not here to shame you or single you out. I was a sinner before I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I was wicked, pa. Everybody has a past. We all have a past, something we're ashamed of, something we feel guilty about, something that has held us in bondage. But the Bible says in Ephesians 2, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world because we're all sinners. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. Tell your neighbor he's talking about you. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. And I came to declare to you today, the resurrection of Jesus isn't just about Jesus, it's about you and me because he rose we can rise because the grave is empty. Our past can be dealt with. It's under the blood and the resurrection power is coming to release you today and wash away your past and deliver you from the sin and the shame and the bondage. Somebody say amen. Amen. Right now, you may be feeling shame over something you did or something that happened to you. You may not have ever told somebody, but I loose the resurrection power to deliver you from shame. And I say, shame off you today in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're feeling guilty. You know you did something you shouldn't have, and it keeps replaying in your mind. You stole money, you committed adultery, you hurt someone. But I speak the resurrection power and the blood of Jesus over your past sin, and I declare you forgiven and free in the name of Jesus. Because Romans 5 tells us Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we were guilty of many sins for the sin of this one man. Adam caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace. Even greater is God's wonderful grace. Even greater 
is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. And I speak greater grace over your life today. I speak greater grace over your past, over your sin, over your bondage. For every single man or woman who ever followed God had a past. Moses was a murderer. Hey, David was an adulterer and a murderer. He was double double -o. Paul was a blasphemer. Every single human being was under the bondage of sin, including you and me. But God's grace is greater. That's the lesson we can learn from an American woman named Crystal Bassett. For many years, Crystal Bassett acted in pornographic movies. Her life revolved around sex, her public image, her movies, her private life. She made hundreds of thousands of dollars being paid to act in pornographic movies. But Crystal Bassett was miserable. She owned a $10 million mansion in Malibu, California. She owned a Ferrari. Some of you don't even own a bicycle. Hey. She owned a Ferrari. She had a club called Crystals, but she didn't have peace. In spite of her fame and her fortune, she was desperate for a change in her life. So on Easter Sunday, Crystal Bassett went to church. She heard the message of Jesus' power to forgive her sins and give her new life. She went forward to the altar and gave her life to Christ. And a new life began for Crystal Bassett. She walked away from the millions. She walked away from the mansion and the Ferrari and the pornographic movies. She moved and restarted her life devoted to Christ. She became a pasta. And today... She lives for Jesus Christ. Listen to her own words, I quote, you need to leave your past behind. In your car, the rear view mirror is small and your windshield is much bigger because the future is bigger than your past. And I'm here to tell you today, no matter what you've done, no matter what you became, no matter where you come from, your future is bigger than your past. When you have the resurrection power in you, all the problems and bondages of your past are, be gone, are gone. And I'm here to tell you today that God's grace is greater. He's greater than your sin, greater than your bondage, greater than the abuse, greater than every defeat, every darkness, every demonic spirit, every ancestral bondage. Jesus Christ died and rose again so that you could be forgiven and get a second chance, a new chance, and have a new life. For Romans 6 says, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. We are sure of this. Somebody say we are sure of this. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. Put your hand on your chest and say, I'm dead to the power of sin and I'm sure of new life because Jesus rose from the dead and I came to tell you today you can be sure you can be certain it is guaranteed if Jesus rose from the dead then your past is past you have new life through the resurrection power of Christ your sins are forgiven the bondage is broken you can be sure of this today and when you find Jesus you won't find him in the place of death when you look for Jesus he's not in the tomb he's not in the darkness he's not in despair he He's not in defeat. If you're looking for Jesus today, you will find him in the place of power, in the place of resurrection. For Jesus is not in the place of death. He's in the place of resurrection power. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. And that brings us to our second truth today. Jesus saves you for a present filled with purpose. First, he saves you from your past, but that's not all. The angel said in verse 7, now... Now, that's today, that's now, that's present. Now, go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. Think about what the angel is saying. He said he was here, that's past, but that's settled. Now, go. Now, 
tell. Now you have a life today, a purpose. And the angel included Peter. Peter who had betrayed Jesus. Peter who denied he even knew him and swore. Hey! Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know how to swear. God bless you. Amen. But the Lord wanted Peter, especially Peter, to know. And if God could call Peter to a life of purpose, if he could include him in his disciples, he is also calling you to include you. Because when your past is under the blood, your present is in God's hands. And in that statement, go and call Peter, there's a message for us. Jesus didn't die and rise again just to redeem your past. Oh, we thank him for the freedom. We thank him that our past is under the blood. But he did more than that. He died and rose again to redeem you from your past and to give you a present life filled with purpose. For God has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. He saved you for a reason to use you and to allow new life to become powerful a daily occurrence in you. That's why we all need to learn the lesson from the crazy American named Casey Michael Lewis. Casey Michael Lewis was caught stealing. He was arrested and sent before the magistrate. The magistrate sentenced him to prison and he was locked up for a period of time. On the day when his time was up, he was set to be released. It was April 4th, 2019. Casey Michael Lewis was released. He'd served his time. He had a new chance, a second chance, a new start. He was out of prison. He could put it behind him and move on. But Casey Michael Lewis did something crazy. When he got out of prison, he went to the car park. The car park, oh, the car park of the prison. And he started breaking into vehicles, stealing phones. Hey. While he's waiting for the Uber to come and pick him, he's breaking into cars, stealing phones. They caught him and they re-arrested Casey Michael Lewis. 15 minutes, hey, 15 minutes after he was released from prison, he was brought right back. 15 minutes, oh. And we can laugh at him. But how many of us have done the same thing? Oh, Jesus, forgive me. 15 minutes later, you're doing the same thing. 15 minutes later, you've gone back again. Come on, you can clap, it's all right. My friend, Jesus didn't die on the cross and rise again so you could continue to live in bondage. He died and rose again so you could live free every single day of your life. He came to save you from your past and save you for your present. And you can have the assurance of his power to take you through in victory every day of your life because Jesus has gone ahead of you. Listen to what the angel said. Now go. Jesus has gone ahead of you. Jesus has gone ahead of you and the angel and the spirit of God say to you today Jesus has gone ahead of you no matter where you pass no matter where you walk no matter where you go no matter the door you enter Jesus has gone ahead of you he's walking the road in front of you he knows the road and he can tell you where to move and how to move he knows the path you're on because he's walked ahead of you today. For Deuteronomy 31, eight says, the Lord himself will go before you. He will not leave you or forget you. So don't be afraid and don't worry. And I'm here to tell you today, you can have a present of victory. You can have a present day of purpose because every step you take, Jesus has gone in front of you. He's cleared the way. He's the holy bulldozer who removes the barriers and makes the way easy for you. And you can walk with him no matter what you face. Jesus has gone ahead of you. Somebody shout hallelujah. And best of all, even when you face the storm, he's already faced it for you. If you're betrayed, he was betrayed. If you face discouragement and darkness, Jesus faced it. He's gone ahead of you and he promises he will take you through. For the Bible says in Isaiah 43, when you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. And I'm here to declare to you today, you are going through. You're going through because Jesus is with you. 
You're going through because Jesus has made a way. You're going through no matter what you face. You may say, Reverend, if you knew my financial position, don't worry, you're going through. You're not going to get stuck. You're not going to be stopped. You're not going to be trapped. You're going through. You say, if you knew the trouble in my family right now, don't worry, you're going through. If you knew the difficulty in my marriage, you're going through. If you knew the trouble in my body, but you're going through. You're going through because Jesus has walked there and gone ahead of you. That's what the disciples discovered. On Friday, they shivered in fear, but Sunday was coming. On Friday, they were in darkness and despair, but Sunday was coming. On Friday, they kept thinking about their master and their savior dead and buried, but Sunday was coming. Don't you think that Judas' betrayal and eventual suicide impacted Peter, James, and John? A man they knew and worked with for three years had just killed himself. They were in darkness and despair, but Sunday was coming, and when Sunday came, the earth shook. When Sunday came, the veil in the temple was torn in two. When Sunday came, the heavens opened, and the light and life of God broke through. Fear was gone. Shame was removed. Bond was gone and a new present hope came. Life was restored and all who believe in Jesus are restored as well. For he's not only gone ahead of you, but he invites you to come along with him and have access to his power. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access. Everybody say access. Access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Listen to the two powerful promises. First, peace with God. That's your past. Your sins are forgiven. But then secondly, he says in verse 2, we have also obtained access. Your past is covered, but today your present reality is that you have access. For Ephesians 2.18 says, for through him we have access to the Father by one spirit. And I release upon you resurrection power today that gives you access to the Father, that gives you access to the kingdom, that gives you access to the anointing, and access to the blessing. And I came to tell you today that no matter what you think of yourself, God says, I'm opened a door and I've made access for you to come in where I am. For when you have access to God, you have access to everything that God has. When you have access to God, you have access to life and access to peace and access to hope and access to anointing. Everything that God is, you have access to. That's the powerful lesson we can learn from a lady in Rwanda named Adele. During a 100-day period in 1994, nearly one million Rwandans were murdered by their neighbors in an ethnic civil war. Adele is a Tutsi woman, and when the Hutus came to her village, they killed her husband. They killed her three children, and a man took a machete and beat her on the head till she was bloodied and scarred, and he left her for dead. For three days, Adele lay there amongst the dead corpses. And after three days, her townsmen came to bury the dead and discovered that Adele was still alive. It took her nearly three years to recover from her wounds and regain her strength. But eventually she did. And when she came out of it, she thought to herself, I could be a bitter, angry, vengeful old woman, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go into the prisons and minister to the murderers. So Adele got up and went to the prison where the people who had killed her townsmen were incarcerated. She started taking them food. She started taking them clothing. She became known as the mother of the prison. One day Adele was in the prison and a man rushed forward and fell on his knees and fell on the ground, grabbed her feet and started kissing her feet. He was weeping. And when she looked at him, she recognized that was the man who killed my husband. That was the man holding my feet who had taken a machete to my head. And he said, Adele, Adele, forgive me. His name was Louis. Adele, Adele, forgive me, she said. And Adele picked him up and looked at him and said, Louis, I will forgive you in the name of Jesus Christ. And she embraced him. Louis gave his life to Christ. He was baptized and became a model prisoner. Eventually, he was released from prison, but all of his family had been killed in the fighting. He had nowhere to go. So Adele didn't just forgive him. 
She took him home. He started to live with her. Adele adopted Louis as her son. It was more than forgiveness. It was access. And that's what God did for us. It was your sin and my sin that caused the whip on his back. It was your sin and my sin that caused the thorns to be pushed into his brow. It was your sin and my sin that nailed the nails in his hands and feet. It was your sin, our sin, that sent Jesus to the grave. But God doesn't just forgive us. He opens his arms and embraces us and welcomes us home. He gives us access. For Ephesians 3 says, this was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly into God's presence. We can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. We have access with confidence through our faith in him. And when you yield to Jesus Christ, and when you follow him, You have access, access to everything God is, and everything God is, is everything you need. Turn your notes over to the next page and understand this good news today. Your access is not limited. It's not limited to a time or a day. It's not limited to a place. You don't have to come to Agape House to have access. You don't have to come on Easter to have access. Jesus Christ gives us access 24-7, 365. For Hebrews 4.16 says, with Jesus as our high priest, we can feel free. Hey, hey, I'm feeling free today. We can feel free to come before God's throne where there is grace. There we receive mercy and kindness to help us when we need it. And I'm feeling free today. I'm feeling confident today. I can come to my daddy morning, noon, and night. I can get the grace I need. I can get the help I need. I can go places nobody else can go because a football star son can play on the field and a CEO son can go anywhere in the factory. And the children of the president can run through the palace. We can go places others can't go because of who we know. Jesus has opened the door for us. He's redeemed our past. He saves us in the presence. And because of his resurrection, we can live in confidence today and forever. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise today. And that brings us to our third truth this Easter morning. Jesus saves you for a future filled with promise. Listen to the words of the angel in verse 7. You will, tell your neighbor you will. You will see him. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. You know, when we're angry with somebody, we like to say, you will see, you will see, you will see, you will see, you will see. But the angel meant something different. He said, you will see. Your future will see the manifestation of God. Your future will see the promise of God. Your future will see Jesus in his glory. Because 1 Peter 1 says, because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life. And we have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now. We have eternal life. And we begin to enjoy it now. We will see the Lord in the land of the living. And we will see him in time to come. For salvation is just the first step to a greater life. He died and rose again so your sins could be forgiven. But that's just the beginning. He died and rose again so you could have access to God 24-7 in this life. And he died and rose again to take us to be with him for all of eternity. The new life is just the beginning for something greater, something better than you ever dreamed possible. That's the lesson we can learn from a man named Marcus Stanley. In 2004, Marcus Stanley was walking down the street in his hometown of Baltimore, Maryland, USA. He was just going to the store to buy something. But along the way, he remembered that he'd forgotten his wallet and he needed to go back and get his card. And as he turned, he saw a group of men and a man walked over to him. He didn't know the man. The man had nothing to do with him, but the man walked over and shot Marcus Stanley in the chest. He fell to the ground and he was so stunned and shocked, he didn't even realize he'd been shot. 
But as he looked up, the man was coming and pointing the gun at him again. And then Marcus Stanley saw an angel. An angel was standing between him and the gunman. The man fired another seven bullets. And every bullet passed through the angel and struck Marcus in the chest. He'd been shot eight times. He lay on the pavement, dying. Then the man turned and walked away. Marcus tried to shout for help, but his throat and voice were gone. He tried to crawl into the street to stop someone. Help me, help me. But no one would stop. There was no help anywhere. He reached in the phone and got his mobile and called the ambulance. They came and picked him and rushed him to the hospital. There he underwent surgery for eight hours. But in that surgery, during the operation, he saw the same angel standing there, hovering over him. Eventually, he was delivered from surgery, but it was a long way to recovery. Marcus Stanley spent one year in the hospital. He had to learn how to walk, learn how to put on his clothes, but he was delivered from his past. God saw him through the present, and finally, after a year, he left the hospital with a future filled with promise. Today, Marcus Stanley is a minister of the gospel. He preaches to people and tells them, your past, your present, and your future is in God's hands. And because of the resurrection, he will see you through. That's why John 6.40 says, everyone, everybody who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Your past, your present, and all of your future is in God's hands. And he's here to let you know today that he's carrying you. He's lifting you. His resurrection power is embracing you. In just a minute, we're going to pray for everybody. We're going to pray for healing, deliverance, salvation, miracles, testimonies. We're going to pray for whatever you need, whatever problem you have. But as we prepare our hearts to receive Jesus' resurrection power, Listen to the promise God makes to us in Isaiah 46, 3 to 5. Listen, God says, I have upheld you since you were conceived, and I have taken care of you from your birth. Even when you are old, I will be the same. <laughs> Even when your hair is turned gray, I will take care of you. I made you and will take care of you. I will carry you and save you. Can you compare me to anyone? No one is equal to me or like me. There is no other Savior, just Jesus. From birth through life, from birth to eternity, your past, your present, your future, no other Savior, just Jesus. Would you stand together with me all across the auditorium, in the back, in the balcony? We're going to have our pastors at the altar. You are welcome to come for prayer for any need at all. Because today, resurrection power is available to all of us. Today, resurrection power has come to save you and heal you and lift you and deliver you. Maybe you're facing marriage problems or financial problems or physical problems. Maybe you need salvation today. But I'm here to release upon you the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is coming into your life from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Maybe you need to be saved from your past today. The power of God is available to you. Maybe you need your present saved today. The power of God is available. Maybe you need your future to be put in his hand. Today, the resurrection power of God is coming to touch you. So release yourself to him. Embrace him. Believe in him. Receive him. Allow him to come and liberate you and save you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I loose a resurrection power upon your people. I loose the name of Jesus. I break every bondage from their past. I break every fear of the present. I break every uncertainty for the future. I loose upon them today resurrection life. Save us, O oh God. Walk with us. Give us access and take us to yourself that we might live now and forever in your resurrection power. We thank you, for we have no other Savior, just you, Jesus. In Jesus' name.